Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Listen, we've been talking about angelic assistance. Hallelujah. I hope it's making sense to you. See, knowledge is one. Applying the knowledge is what produces results. So you can be here listening and listening and saying, hmm, hmm, hmm. Let me tell you this. Two things you do with knowledge that causes it to produce supernatural results for you. Number one, meditate on it until the Holy Spirit himself confirms it to you. What do I mean by that? You dwell on it by thinking about it until you begin to get inside yourself. So you're not just saying what that pastor said. You know, that pastor said this, that pastor said. No, you dwell on it until you yourself begin to see. You're like, wow, no wonder. Hey, hey, now I understand. Yeah, <laughs> praise God. That's number one. Then number two, open your mouth and begin to share that thing that you have understood. Don't keep quiet about it. You meet your colleague at work. Hey, man, do you really know that we have angels working for us? He said, what do you mean? Sit down, let me teach you. And then you begin to share the things that the Spirit of God has taught you. I tell you this, when you speak it out and share it, what are you doing? You are drawing angels near you. <laughs> you are drawing angels. And they, because angels love the Word of God when it comes from our mouths. They love it. That's why we pray. That's why, you know, you know prayer. People think prayer is just, oh, Father, give me bread today. If you can just give me bread today, I will know that you are God. Hey, hey, you don't understand something. <laughs> Let's pray, Father. <laughs> oh, your word is glorious, Lord. So sweet, so sweet. Thank you. Your great power is at work in us. And we receive today ministry of angels. I thank you for the great things that we'll see today. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. By the word of the Lord, Yokes are being destroyed. Now, let me tell you how, how, how this works. Sometimes, the word of God is coming. And you don't sense you have any body in your life. But you see, you're, you're listening to the word of God. And suddenly, the Lord says, hey, go and do so and so thing for so and so person. See, see, that, that environment, as you're listening to the word of God, it, it gives you the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And, and suddenly you hear the Holy Spirit tell you, hey, go and visit so and so person. Or send so and so person some money. You say, hmm, hmm, okay, Lord, I'll do it. And then you obey the Lord. And then there's a testimony. Wow, you don't know what you just did. You just lifted a huge burden from me. You see, I prayed that burdens are being lifted. So it's not just, oh, I have a heavy heart. Ah, praise God, is lifted. Even you, by, by reason of the word of God coming to you, and when you act on it, you begin to ease of burden from other people's lives. Praise God. That's how it works. So, so we've been talking about how God sends his angel to help us on the journey that he's called us to. At the every assignment God gives to you, He sends an angel to help you. See, if you're a preacher and God says, Go to Susan So City to preach, an angel has been sent before you. And now it depends on what you want and how big your vision is and, and what you want to see. See, as for God, His plan for you is to the ends of the earth. Are you ready to believe him to walk till that point? Now, this takes precept being upon precept, line upon line. But you see, as you follow the Lord day by day, 
understanding him that's all he requires of you understand me and that's why we bring teachings like this to you now I'm talking to you about the way the role of angels in your life so you get into any situation you just know you don't need anybody to tell you angels are here already angels have been sent to help me the angel of God encamps around me so what do I do with them now, the moment I realize I'm in a challenge and that challenge is not easing out, what do I do? It's time to pray. And what prayer do I pray? Oh God, remove this challenge from me. No, sir. Father, what do you want me to do? James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask from the Lord. Who gives to every man liberally and he does not upbraid. He doesn't find fault. And it shall be given him. You get stuck in life. Don't stay there and be wondering. Why am I stuck? Hey, pause. Lord, what do you want me to do? Because there are angels all in that place. And guess what? They are waiting for you to speak. You remember Elisha. Elisha, there was famine in the land so bad that people began to eat their children. And then the message got to the king and the king was furious. He said, what? I'm going to slaughter the head of Elisha if I catch him today. And he sent a messenger to go before him. Now the messenger got there and knocked. Before the messenger, Elisha was there with some elders. And guess what they were doing? They were waiting on the Lord. Praise God. They were waiting on the Lord. Oh God, do something. Oh God, do something. Oh God, do something. And suddenly the word of the Lord came to him. He said, young prophet, or, or Mr. Prophet, the king has sent someone to come and cut off your head. And he spoke it out and said, hey, that, 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 that fellow, the king, he has sent somebody to come for my life. He said, when he comes, pin him at the door. <laughs> While he was still speaking, there was a knock on the door. Then he said, whoa. He answered today. He says, hey, this trouble is from the Lord. Why are we waiting on the Lord any longer? And then what did he do? This is chapter 6. Now into chapter 7. He now opened his mouth and said, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, a corn of wheat shall be sold for this sheep. And, and, and they're like, huh? What are you talking about? He spoke. Hey, guess what? God have already told the angels at that point when there shall be a famine, they shall wait for Elijah to speak. When Elijah speaks, then a new door is opened. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Meanwhile, Elijah was here waiting on the Lord. Lord, what do we do? Lord, help us sort this famine out. Where whatever is causing this famine, sort it out. Meanwhile, God was waiting for him to speak. And, 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 and see, the Spirit of God spoke to me. Because when I read things like this, I take it back to him. I say, Lord, how does it work? How could Elijah have missed it? And then the word of the Lord came to me. He says, Elijah already, now listen, oh, listen, 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 listen. The Lord spoke to me and said, Elisha already have been told what to say before that time. But he couldn't accept it. The Lord had told him, hey, Elisha, I'm going to bring my glory upon the land. Things are going to be so cheap you can't believe it. And then Elisha thought, how? He said, a corn of wheat is going to be sold for this cheap. Elijah said, I wanted to say it. Lord, from where? How will I say it? You know, imagine, imagine the Lord speaking to you today. I mean, you're in Nigeria. And then the Lord comes to you and says, Son, I want you to declare that by tomorrow, about this time, one dollar is going to be 25 kobo. <laughs> you know what that means? <laughs> and you look at it, say, how much is a dollar now? About almost almost 500 or almost 480 or 70 something like that. Now. And the Lord said, Go and declare that by this time tomorrow. And you're like, Huh? 
no. If you are a father, if you want to do your way, just do your way. Because <laughs> you're thinking of your reputation. Now. You're, how, how is this thing going to happen? How on earth? How on earth? If he had said tomorrow by this time, a non dollar will be like maybe nice, 470, maybe it's going to be like 400. Okay, maybe. But I'm telling you, 25 kobo. We don't even use Kobo again in this country. Yeah, I want you to declare. <laughs> Lord, let's pray some more. Robo Bobo Shakaka Lekotoko Roko Baba Raga Baba Baba. Son, I have told you what to say. <laughs> No, Robaga Rakoba. Let's pray some more, Brendan. Let's pray some more. Son, I have told you what to say. And guess what? The angels were waiting for him to declare that word. And then suddenly God says, you don't want to say it, right? They are coming for your head. The king have sent someone to come for your head because you are the one holding the nation to ransom. How? How? And then he spoke to them and said, guys, that king, the Lord just told me now that the king is... He didn't tell them the other part that the Lord told him. <laughs> now when he realized that danger was imminent, then he had no choice but to speak the word of the Lord. And then he declared it. That's when he spoke. And when he spoke, <laughs> the, the guy, the king sent, were like, <laughs> even if the windows of heaven is opened, this thing cannot be. Now, see the man that was scared to declare the word of the Lord before, now became bold. When, when he was challenged, <laughs> you see. Now that's how these things work. I've been there. You know, God will tell you something impossible. And then you, 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 you are now challenged by man. So this thing can never happen. And then you find yourself saying, listen, if it doesn't happen, I will stop preaching. Now, this was you. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. This was you that was battling with God that you ah, I can't declare this kind of thing. Ah, it's true somehow. No, no, no. Now, here you are facing an opposition. And now boldness have come. See, because the moment the word comes out of your mouth and a new grace and energy comes into your being. Now that's how you know that that word is from the Lord. A new grace and energy comes on you. Now, because you've said it, it's done. It, 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 it has come out of your mouth already. So it's done. Praise God. And guess what? The following day, you know the dynamics. You know what happened behind the scene. Angels began to walk behind the scene and cause things to happen. And suddenly, there was a flood of food at the gate of the city. And you know, Elisha opened his mouth to say, you, you that says it can never happen, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I wish he had kept quiet at that point. But you see, that, that, that was his emotion at all. But guess what? Because all those utterances came from his mouth. Now, God have told the angels, look, this man is going to utter words. When he uttered those words, you make sure every word that comes out of his mouth happens as he says. Yes, sir. And so they were waiting for Elisha to speak. And then Elisha spoke. And then someone provoked him. And then he spoke some more. And everything, just as he said it, came to pass. Brothers and sisters, you don't know the power that we carry. You don't know. And that's why you're there blaming the government. That's why you're there blaming situation. Blaming your uncle that didn't send you to school. Blaming your father that didn't get that good job that he was supposed to get by corruption. Blaming your mother that, uh, that uh, married your father too early. You know, you blame everybody for your life. No way. They are not responsible. You are fully responsible for the situation you are in right now. And let me tell you this truth. God is waiting for you to speak. The angels are all around you. But they will do nothing until you open your mouth and begin to prophesy. You say, how do I prophesy? By the spirit of the living God in you. When you begin to pray and pray, words begin to come into your spirit. Sometimes those words sound too foolish, sound so unrealistic. Brothers and sisters, speak it. Listen, there is no payment for speaking. You don't pay to speak. You understand what I'm saying? You, you don't speak and your units are going down. You know, understand? You just declare, declare, declare. The angels are there already. God have told them, when you hear the sound from him, then you go do what he has said. They are waiting for you to carry out the instructions. Praise God. Would you begin to speak today? Don't keep quiet. 
speak and receive the result. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.